substances. So as I every time tell you that the first main thing that you have to learn is the name of the chapter, the meaning of the name of the chapter. What does separation of substances means? So first thing that we will study is what is separation? So separation means removal of substances from a mixture of two or more substances. Means if we have mixed two or more substances together, and then we have to remove any of the substances that is known as separation. For example, you can see separation of stones from rice. When we separate out the stones from rice. Okay, I will show you. See, these are the pictures of separation. Okay, see this boy. He is separating out the things. And the second thing is that separating tea from tea leaves. Okay, when we strain the tea in this uh, strainer, through the strainer, the tea leaves and the tea is separated. That is the example of separation. The third thing, thing is separating chaff from the grains. When we separate the grains and the ch chaff, uh, then this is also a kind of separation. Now, Separation of substances. There are many instances when we notice a substance being separated from a mixture. In our everyday life, you see your mother working in the kitchen. She might be separating one thing from the another. Okay, when you are working, okay, when you are performing any of the activity, you separate the thing. For example, in your pencil box, you separate out the pens, you separate out the pencils. So this is what separation is. Uh, tea leaves that are separated from a liquid means tea. Tea and tea leaves, they are separated after the preparing of tea. So that is also separation. See this picture you can see in your book also. This is separating tea leaves with the help of a strainer. When the tea is prepared, that tea leaves are separated out and the liquid tea is separated. These two are the mixture. And these two components are separated with the help of the stainer, just to open channi bolte hain. Okay, these two are separated, and this is one of the most common example of separation of substances. Now, why we need to separate these? We cannot drink the tea with these tea leaves. It will not taste good. The first main main thing is that it will not taste good. Okay, we are yeah, we are drinking liquid, and that solid components of tea leaves will come. It will all ruin the taste of the tea. Now, this poha. Okay, you can see the image of the poha. When uh, this poha is prepared, and uh, some of you might not like the peanuts. Okay, moongfali jo hai or the curry leaves, which we curry patta bolte hain. Okay. So what you do is you separate out by picking out those things. Okay, uh, so this is also one of the example of separation. Now you are given a basket of mangoes and guavas. What you have to do is you have to separate out the mangoes and the guavas. So it is very easy. You can just pick up the mangoes and place it in one basket and the guavas in the another basket. So in this manner, the two substances will be separated from each other. This third one is churning. Figure 5.2 that you can see in your book that butter is taking out, taken out by churning milk. Churning milk, milk ko churn karte hain, okay? And then what is separated out? Butter is taken out. See, nowadays at home, we use this, this tool. Okay, this tool is used to separate out the butter or the ghee. Ghee banate hain na jise ghar pe. So this process is used, churning of milk. The milk is churned and the butter or ghee is taken out from this. So these are some of the common examples of separation of substances. Now we will learn why do we need to separate these substances. The first main thing is that to obtain two different but useful components. Yes two different but useful components like poha. Okay, when you separated these peanuts from the poha, the peanuts are also the useful components. So we need to separate the two 
useful components like you separated mangoes and guavas both are the useful components but we have to separate them the next thing is that to remove the non useful components like you strain the tea in the strainer the tea leaves are separated so tea leaves are the non useful components so we need to separate one useful and the another non useful component to remove the impurities or harmful components when you pick up the stone from the rice or dal what you are removing you are removing the impurities okay the stones that are there they are very harmful components so these impurities are removed when we separate the stones from the rice or the pulses so this is the another need why we need to separate the substances now to group the substances of different sizes to group the substances of different sizes means you have collected all the items and you have mixed each other now you need to separate them on the basis of their sizes like in the previous chapter what we studied the objects how they are classified or how they are classified in groups on the basis of their sizes so this is why we need to separate the substances so once again i will repeat the first thing is that we need to separate both the useful components the next thing is that we have to separate one useful and one non useful component the third thing is that we have to remove the impurities or the harmful substances that are present the third fourth thing is that to group the substances on the basis of their sizes so these are the things why we need to separate the substances from a mixture now some of the basic methods of separation these four methods i will teach you today the first method is hand picking the second is threshing the third is winnowing and the fourth one is sieving so these are the four methods the simplest methods of separating substances now i will explain you how these methods are used or why these methods are used so the first these are the methods of uh, separation of substances threshing winnowing okay the next one is hand picking and sieving so these four methods i will explain you today that uh, by using these methods how can we separate different substances so the first basic method that you can see in your book also the methods of separation the first is hand picking and this is the easiest method the simplest method of separation of substances and what we have to do is in this method is used when we have to separate the unwanted materials that are present in very small quantity like uh for example you are take uh, you have taken one plate of raw rice matlab kachchi uh, rice liye hai chawal liye hai now you have to separate the stones from that rice so which method you will use you will use the method of hand picking and in this the shape uh, size color of the unwanted material it is different from that of the useful material yes the stones are usually black brown in color and they are little big in size and some are small in size but they are very different from that of the rice so this is how hand picking is done the undesired material means the material that we don't want that is different from the material that we want the useful material so in this manner what which method of separation we use we use hand picking and it is the simplest method of separation of substances now the examples are that pebbles pebbles matlab chote chote jo hote hai na jaise uh, for example uh, the pebbles that you put it in the aquarium and all the colorful small small stones like material those are the pebbles when you have to separate the pebbles okay broken grains when you have to separate insects when you are insects are separated from the rice okay pebbles are separated from the rice 
broken grains are separated from the rice these are all done by using hand picking method from the wheat from the pulses means dals when uh, these all impurities like a uh, small small pebbles okay the broken grains and the insects when they are separated by using hand picking material from rice wheat and pulses in this manner the impurities or the unwanted materials are separated from the useful materials now you can see in the next slide see the components of a solid solid mixture can be separated yes solid means the uh, stone is also solid insect is also solid and we are separating them from the rice wheat or pulses this is only useful when the particles are large enough to be seen clearly yes if you cannot see the unwanted particles or the harmful impurities that are present you cannot separate them by using the hand picking material and it is the most commonly used method of separation so separating pebbles from rice or dal separating grass from mint leaves separating parts of salad these are some of the examples in which we practice hand picking the separation the method of separation hand picking the first and the easiest method hand picking is practiced you can see the images see this man is separating the stones from the wheat you can clearly see the stones are separated by the process of hand picking now the next method of separation is threshing now what threshing is see threshing is used for separating the seeds from the harvested stalk see the harvested stalk is there and when you have to separate the grains or the seeds from that stalk then we practice the method of threshing and this threshing is practiced in three types first is manual means by man the second one is by using animals and the third one is by using machines so i will show you all the methods of threshing and how are they practiced see this is what uh, how threshing is performed you can see this stalk you can see the shaft and the grains what happens when the farmer or the any man when it beats when it beats the grain the stalks on any hard surface then these grains are separated out i will show you how manual threshing is performed see this man is uh, beating these stalks of grain on that hard surface and all the grains are separating out so this is how threshing is performed after the crop is harvested then the next process comes is the threshing in this threshing the farmer or any of the man it he, he or she beats the stalks then uh, by beating the stalks the grains are separated so this is the second method of separation of substances now i will show you how it is done by using an machines see this is the thresher the machine that is used in the process of threshing is known as thresher okay and when large quantities of grains they need to be separated from the stalk then these this machines are used you can see how these machines separate out the grains and the stalk the next is how animals are used you can see the oxen the bullocks okay they are used in the process of threshing this uh, means these oxen and all they walk on that stalk matter wherever it is placed after the harvesting and then the grains are separated out from the stalk so this is the second method of separate 
cutting out the materials the first method that we studied was hand picking the next second method that we studied is the threshing now the next method that we will study is winnowing winnowing is the next or the third method of separation of substances and it is also an agricultural method and it is used to separate the heavier and the lighter components one instrument or you can say one plate like structure called soup theek hai that you call soupa in hindi okay that is used in the process of winnowing and uh, what happens in winnowing when you place all that matter means the grains the husk whatever it is when you place in that soupa and what you do when you blow the air when you blow the air the lighter and the heavier particles are separated out should you see this winnowing is used to separate the heavier and the lighter components of a mixture by wind or by blowing the air the grains they settle down and the husk or the dust matter flows and settles at some distance like you can see uh, zoom damage this is bigger one the grains are there see the grains are there okay so these are the heavier matter matter it moves away with the blowing see you can see this picture in the all clay is using to separating out the grains from the husk and the husk matter okay uh, i will explain uh, the first that we studied is the hand picking i will show you the slides again then we will move, move to the sieving part the hand picking so when solid and solid they are separated that process is known as hand picking some common examples are the rice or dal and the pebbles are mixed in that rice or dal and we have to separate those pebbles from rice or dal then we use the method of hand picking the next is the separating of grass from the mint leaf mint leaves means pudina when you have to separate the grass from the pudina leaves we use the process of hand picking the next one is that separating the parts of salad means you have all uh, cut all that cucumber onions tomatoes carrots and everything in in one bowl and now you have to separate out those materials so we need the process of hand picking this man is performing hand picking he is separating out the impurities like stones uh, pebbles from the rice or the wheat the next process that, that we studied is threshing so threshing is the process that is used to separate the grains from the stalk so that uh, this threshing is performed in three ways manual threshing uh, threshing by animals and threshing by machines so this picture is of manual threshing in this a man he is using his man power to separate out the grains from the stalk he beats the stalk in some heavy or the uh, solid surface and then these grains are, are separated out the next is you can see how threshing is performed by using thresher that is the machine that is used in the process of threshing 
so in this all the stocks and all are placed inside the machine and in that machine out uh, with the help of the machine power the grains and the stock are separated out the next is you can see how the animals are used in the process of threshing for separating out the stock and the grains so this is how threshing is performed the next method that we studied is winnowing and winnowing is used to separate the heavier and the lighter components by using wind by wind when the heavier and the lighter components are separated then the process is known as winnowing see this is how winnowing is performed all the grains by using soup it is performed the heavier the grain particles they settle down and the lighter the husk particles or the dust particles they move away with the wind so this is how winnowing is performed now the last method of separation that we will study today means more methods are there for today the last method that we will study is sieving so so sieving is done by using sieve channi jisko bolte hain okay and it is a device for separating wanted elements from the unwanted material or for characterizing the particle size distribution of a sample typically using a woven screen such as mesh or net or metal and this is known as sieve means if you have the sieves in your house you will see some of them are made of plastic some of them are made of cloth material and some of them are made of metal mesh like choti choti channi hoti hai okay and <coughs> excuse me the sieving is used to separate minute particles of different sizes passing it through the sieve yes the heavier or the bigger particles they settle at the sieve and the lighter particles or the smaller particles they move down the sieve different size of sieves are used to separate different types of mixture and this sieve is a device that is used in the process of sieving means to separate the substances of two different sizes and the sieve has tiny holes in it which are used to separate the wanted materials from the unwanted materials you can see this image the first one is yeah, the uh, flour is separated out okay uh, if uh, means the flour okay uh, when you bring the flour from the flour mill it also contains some of the impurities some bigger particles are present in it present in it so when you need to prepare the chapatis and all what you have to do is you have to separate out that heavier or the bigger particles from that so what do you use you use sieve in that process and whenever the construction work is going on so this is how the pebbles and stones are removed from the sand if you must have seen they use long sieve the big big sieves are used to separate out the stones and the pebbles from the sand so this is how sieving is done see again you can see these two pictures clearly this is how sieving of flour is done through the small sieve and this is how the uh, pebbles and the stones are separated from the sand using the big sieve you can see this sieve this is the metal sieve this is the metal sieve the mesh chote chote jo mesh dikh rahi hai jali dikh rahi hai it is made of metal and in this one when you will see i will show you see this one it is made up of plastic this one sieve it is made up of plastic so these are the different types of sieves that we use uh, in our daily day to day life for separating out the uh, smaller particles from the bigger particles so these are the four types of these four types of methods of separation that we studied today the first method of uh, separation was hand picking 
the second was threshing third was uh, winnowing and the fourth one was sieving so so now anyone is having any doubt you can mention in the chat box in these four methods anyone is having any doubt okay uh, i can see some of the doubts yes hand picking takes a lot of time uh, beta but if we need to uh, separate a smaller uh, means in a small quantity if we need to separate something in a small quantity then we have to use the method of 